Hi, I'm Kevin Cohen. Uh, wow, this is going to be tough to follow up. That was kind of incredible harp playing. I've never heard a harp played before. I think I've only seen them in cartoons. Uh, <laughs> so that was lovely. Um, I was reading a Seamus Heaney poem today, and he said that um, he has this line that says, interrogate ghosts. I thought that was kind of interesting, and I think kind of maybe that's the project of this poem. Um, I'm about to read. It's called After Her Mastectomy. It's in um, the recent issue of Colonnades. Um, I brought a few copies back there, so feel free to grab them. They're free. Um, after her mastectomy, she taught her son how to undo and then reclasp her bras. They draped them around hangers to dry just above the radiator. Maybe don't tell your first girlfriend that your mom taught you this, she said. She wanted all her old bras, empty for nearly a year now, clean when she dropped them off at the parish clothes drive. That morning, her brother had called, offering her belly rolls for the reconstruct offering his belly rolls for the reconstructive surgery. She laughed then, her chest shallow and heaving. It didn't hurt like it used to, when her stitches were still two taut crescents across her chest. They clipped the bras oblong around the wire hangers. Two to a frame, they swayed in the furnace's warm breath. Looking out the fogged window, she crossed her forearm diagonally over the valley of her chest, counting all the ways she felt less. So the theme this year that we've been talking about has been hospitality and welcome. And I think that at root, when we feel at home somewhere, it's because we have some type of a connection. So I try to think of ways that music creates connections, and I came up with three among the many. One of them is the connection that's made between the musician and the listener. But even though I'm way up here and you're way out there, there is a very real connection that takes place between us because of the nature of sound. That when I pluck a string or even say a word, those vibrations are traveling through air. They're changing your body. Your body, the eardrum is vibrating, eventually in the inner ear, that's sending chemical, electrical impulses through the nerves into your brain. Things are happening inside of you when you listen, when you hear something. So that's one of the principles that I use with the harp, especially when I'm playing in hospitals. There's this idea called entrainment, that if I play music at a nice, slow, steady pace, that someone else's body is going to entrain to that rhythm. Their heart rate, their respiratory rate will slow to the rate of the music. And I've seen this happen. I've been able to watch the monitors as I've played. And I want to tell you about this harp because I think this harp in particular is symbolic of that relationship, of that relationship of friends um, and when two people connect. Because as you see, this harp is different than the other harp because it, only ha it has two rows of strings instead of just one row. And this works on the principle of sympathetic vibrations, that when I pluck one string, its partner string that's tuned to the same pitch is going to vibrate as well, even though I'm not touching it. And you can see this happen. So, for instance, the, the strings are tuned to the same pitches across from each other. And when I pluck this low G string, this one starts to vibrate. You might not be able to see it from where you are, but you can surely come up later and see how that string is also vibrating. So because of that effect, um, I'm able to create different effects on this harp. The, the unisons are going to be stronger, the harmonies are going to be richer, and I can create special effects that you can't do on a normal harp. Um, and I think that's really symbolic of friendship, how when we're with someone, we say we resonate with someone we love. We say we're on the same wavelength. Same things, the same principles are taking place here. So the first piece I'm going to play for you is a Welsh melody called Old Harp. And I imagine two friends getting together and talking about the old days when they play this melody.
The next connection that takes place is, especially for those of us who are musicians, that we have a special connection to our instruments. All those hours spent practicing, years with the same instrument. When I see my harp on stage, no matter how nervous I've been backstage, when I walk out and see my harp, I feel safe. <laughs> I know that I've spent time with that instrument and that we have a connection, almost a relationship. Um, this harp in particular has been with me for about 15 years and one of the favorite pieces of mine to play on it is an Irish melody called Sit Down Under My Protection. And the third connection with music is the music itself. The music itself has the power to make us feel very emotion, uh, powerful emotions. I know we've all felt this, uh, that we all have our own little personal connection to different songs that have had meaning throughout our lives. And when you hear that song, it takes you back, it gives you memories of other times. For instance, when I play at the hospital, probably the most requested song is Amazing Grace. And for many people, even without the words, just hearing the melody makes them feel safe, makes them feel at home, makes them feel loved. So while there's no one song that I could play for, that would demonstrate this for all of you, I tried to find um, a familiar tune that um, many of you might know to experience that feeling of being called back to other memories. It's the um, British tune, Scarborough Fair. Just to remind you the melody. So on and so forth. Um, and so one of the things that happens with music is that you may know the melody, but then it's how that melody gets um, played by the musician or by the um, composer. And you'll see that because of this particular instrument with its two sets of strings, it can create sort of a different sound where that, where that melody is kind of interwoven amongst the other sounds.
thanks again for coming to this. This is kind of surreal. Um, reading anyways and following up, such a lovely act. Um, I feel like I'm just bringing everyone to a very brooding place, so I'm sorry for getting all hamlet on everyone. Um, this one's called uh, 12 Stanzas to Deal with Your Auntie's Death. There you are, 18, by her bedside, the responsible nephew. You're half sure she's breathing, but the nurse wheeled away the EKG a few minutes earlier. Her respirator is still plugged in, humming beside her headrest. In the x-ray photo clipped to the bed's footboard, her liver's all shriveled. You are drunk with worry and beer and whiskey. For this, you feel guilty, also good. Your motor skills lag, clunky as the controls of a bad video game, when you set your hand on her quilted leg. Beside you, Dad clutches a green plastic rosary he doesn't know how to pray with. Just an hour ago, you huddled around a Boston bar with your cousins. The bartender didn't ID you. You're drunk of an uncle with a sunken skull sulked at the end of the bar, alone. A soon-to-be widower, the catalyst to her cirrhosis, enabler extraordinaire, him with a platoon of wounded PBR soldiers saluting from their nightstand. He cratered the crown of his head in a solo motorcycle wreck a month ago. At the bar, mom walked past him and tapped you on the shoulder told you it was time to go, and gave you a Ricola to hide your beer breath from dad, whose lapdoll was siblings through the program. You switched seats with her to parallel park the car when she couldn't. And so here you are, at the ICU, drunk, thinking of the yodeling Ricola man, wondering what to do with your hands. Thank you. <laughs>